you probably need a little inoculation, a little blessing, a little GPS. You know what that was? That was a cat. George, Patrick, Zorn, Michael, to support you. So it's a very, very surreal world, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not really sure what I will talk about tonight, but I think... I think I'm going to talk a little bit about sunlight and darkness. The Grim Reaper, the Angel of Death. It's that time of year. Passover. give you a little you need as much spirit as you can get if you're here especially if you're here no one watches this channel so I can do whatever I want so in the theme of sunlight We have the spring equinox here. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sunlight is going to be shining brighter. Say the sun is the high king of heaven. It rises every day, every year. The surreal world. It's real, it sure is. So, a corona is a circle of light, like what you would see during maybe a, a solar or a, 
a lunar well not maybe not so much a lunar eclipse because the corona is the aura of all the dust and ice particles around the sun and other stars and it's it's also a crown um, usually given to people of high esteem or um, a halo like maybe an angel would have <clears throat> um, it's the round center of a daffodil bright sunny daffodil which is starts blooming in many places around this time of year Our head is our crown. So I was just thinking about the Chinese Lunar New Year. Most um, old religions and belief systems um, did count time by the moon, the moon phases. And, um, back a little while ago, there was a giant celebration in Wuhan. And I haven't looked up the meaning of Wuhan, but if I recall right, a long time ago, um, looking up some Asian myths and things, Wu was, I believe, the name of God, maybe even the God, like the sun God. <clears throat> I could be wrong on this. I'd have to look it up again, but I could swear they called him Wu. And then we have this sickness come out of this giant party and celebration that was born of nocturnal animals of the night, bats. Um, it's a giant bat, like a giant cloud, black cloud of darkness. flying around the world, threatening to even shut us off from the light. And I was thinking about this time of year that's coming up, which is um, the meeting of day and night, when for a small moment of time in the spring equinox, we have light and dark being even and equal. They balance each other out, but the daylight, the sun, is going to gain prominence and warm up the northern hemisphere. And we have Easter and Passover coming up. At the same time that we're being self-isolated and quarantined, and now California is announcing they don't want anyone to go out at all for any reason, people are being told to shut themselves into their homes to avoid, basically to avoid the angel of death and spreading it. It's, it's invisible. It's on everyone, or it could be, and on everything. Or it could be. And it could particularly harm our elderly, our older people, our firstborns. I'm just having fun making my little myth here. Our older people are firstborns, our firstborn sons and daughters. And so we're being told to close ourselves in to protect them.
No work, no money, no possible future that we see right now. Because even if the lives are spared, none of our lives are spared. Because if this keeps on going, even just this one week is devastating to many businesses. They can never reopen. Small restaurants. And when people don't have money, and when they're devastated and depressed and they've lost everything, they get depressed and they get sick and they die. Heart attacks increase. Um, marriage problems. Poverty. So this darkness born out of nocturnal animals and people with no belief and they're not allowed to believe in anything other than their leader, their pharaoh. This threatens to take us all down. Make us all sick in one way or another. And maybe we all are sick. And a long, long, long time ago, there was an event called Passover. At Passover, the people were told, this is my rough remembering of it, after suffering many plagues, um, to make themselves a good dinner and a lamb and put a mark over the doorway of their house to mark them out and who they were and that they were covered and protected and they were to shut themselves in their house in the dark and not go out self-isolate, self-quarantine with their supplies and eat their dinner in their house while the angel of death went up and down looking for the unmarked doorways and would kill the firstborn sons of the area. And that was the first Passover. And after that, the king, the leader, the pharaoh, told the people to get out, to leave, because his firstborn son was dead. And he'd fought with them enough, but... Um, Anyway, what I'm thinking is that maybe this story rhymes. It's not the same story, but it rhymes a little bit with an old story that we've had written down for thousands and thousands of years about slavery and freedom and light and dark. Um, different ways of preparing food that might be a little more sanitary. Um, a group of people who would not have eaten bats. There are reasons we don't eat and prepare foods in certain ways. And I'm um, maybe I am being a little bit critical of this We're in a modern world, and some parts of it are still not modern. Everything they do is tracked, but they're not modern. 
they're behind. They're like stunted because they're trapped in the dark. Have you got the doorways of your house, of yourself, you got them covered. Maybe the angel of death is passing through and maybe we do need to think a little bit about the meaning of Passover and communion. another shared thing that, that happens on Easter. Um, people eating together, sharing, communing, forgiveness. Um, maybe we do need to think about what those things mean this time of year, this year, because they seem to be kind of playing out a little bit worldwide. There might be some meaning Never know. But I've got this to say. The sun always rises from the darkness. May the force be with you and your GPS.